Hi guys, I'm Johanna. Welcome back to my channel. Today, bit of a different video. I went down a rabbit hole on the old research tube and I've really got into ancient man evolution and all of the subspecies of humans because in recent years there has been a lot more subspecies of humans that have like popped up in the timeline. The new information that is coming out is just it's just way more interesting. So I thought I would try and digest and relay like the latest information about ancient man and some of the new theories that scientists are coming up with because it is So at school, you might have been shown like this kind of typical graph, which shows a very Darwinian evolution of how we came to be. And the theory was that we obviously spanned from millions of years ago from apes, and then we evolved slowly into what we are today. Turns out the story is way more interesting and way more diverse and new stuff just keeps popping up all over the gaff. So the new kind of template or like the image of of our ancient past instead of looking like a kind of linear line it's more like a crazy family tree full of crazy cousins and everyone's having sex with everyone as well which is weird i just call them cousins like neanderthals didn't evolve into humans neanderthals were a completely separate subspecies of human that were around at the same time as humans and they had sex and made other humans. And did you know that even today, most people in the world can have up to 5% Neanderthal genes uh, like in their DNA sequencing. Like it's literally come down um, from the past, which is like pretty cool. So we've got Neanderthals, which obviously is the kind of most famous one, but everything that we kind of knew about the Neanderthals, it's kind of wrong. And they are so much, more complex, intelligent, and just pretty much cooler than we ever really gave them credit for. That whole idea of them being like stupid cavemen, mm -mm, kind of in fact the opposite. I'll get more onto that in a moment. We also have a relatively new species called the Denisovans or Denisovans, depends on how you wanna say it, don't really know. They found a finger bone of this whole new little subspecies of human. And what's cool about the Denisovans is they found the skeletal remains of a love child between a Denisovan and a Neanderthal. I'm not sure which way around it was, whether it was a, the mum was a Neanderthal or the dad was a Neanderthal, I don't know. But anyway, they had a love child and this love child was found in a cave. And not only that, but they found the most amazing jewelry that this Denisovan kid had. Cool kid. I think she was not like a child. I think she was an adult. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is they found this amazing jewelry and the jewelry is like a kind of jade, kind of like a bracelet or a talk. I think a talk is when it doesn't go like all the way around the wrist. They found this jade talk, which had been drilled in like literally like a tubular drill hole, very similar to the stuff that we see all over ancient Egypt. This bracelet is 40,000 years old and it had a little drill hole that they then looped through some sort of pendant that was hanging down, which is kind of like, it's painting a very different picture to just how developed these ancient humans were. And maybe there's like a whole heck of culture and technology that they had that we just have no idea about. Um, one thing that I did find that was super cool and may link to um, some of the other much, much later ancient sites. There is a cave, I'm blanking where the cave is now, but if you go, it, the cave has been sealed for 175,000 years, opened recently. And if you go 300 meters into this cave, you can see evidence it's a, it's a Neanderthal home or maybe temple or it's something because they arranged these rocks in a very specific way. Maybe it's religious, maybe it was functional, not sure. Um, but they also have um, evidence of burning and fire. And because it was 300 meters into the cave, there was no natural sunlight. So they were living with artificial light in this cave. And when you look, I'm gonna put here some of the images of this cave. The my most immediate thought was, oh my God, that looks like the layout of Gobekli Tepe. Oh my God, that looks like the kind of layout of 
of um, all of these ancient sites that are being unearthed in Turkey, yet 175,000 years before, Neanderthals were doing a very similar arrangement of stone. Like, do they have any connection? I don't know, but they sure look really similar. Can you see what I'm seeing? Can you see that connection as well, just visually? Do you know anything about this? We have a whole new, whole new subculture. Subculture? Subspecies. A whole new subspecies that appeared over in China. Um, you might have seen it on the news, like, semi-recently. Um, they haven't even got a name for this subspecies yet. It's called Dragon Man. So maybe the dragon, I mean, that's, if there's going to be a human gang called the dragons, like, that's just the coolest one of them all, really, isn't it? Anyway, this man was found, well, not the man, they found a head of a man that was hidden down a well for, like, 90 years. And um, when they got it out and they, like, analysed it, it's super old, it's, like, 140,000 years old. And it looks nothing like any of the other human skulls that we've found so far. And they're like, this dude is obviously from, like, a whole different gang than the Denisovans or the Neanderthals or the Homo sapiens. And then recently, because of all the like DNA sequencing, it's so easy now to um, get your DNA analyzed. Like I've done it myself, I've done 23andMe, I found out what my ancestry is, super cool. Found out that I'm from all over parts of Europe. I even have North African like ancestry which is super cool because I'm really into Egypt, so maybe that makes sense. So with all of the like modern day like sequencing that they're able to do now, um, they found that when they tested uh, the genome and the DNA from Pacific Islanders, they're coming across a type of DNA that they haven't matched to anything yet. It's like brand new. And it's specifically in the Pacific Islander genome pool. I've got to put this pen down because I'm, I'm annoying myself with it, so I'm probably annoying you with it. Another way that um, all of this like DNA science and genome science that's really helping us to like look back and decode the past is the fact that they can tell who has Neanderthal DNA. Like you can literally buy a test at 23andMe or one of those and they can tell you what percentage of Neanderthal DNA that you have in you. And it's highly likely that you do have a bit because they estimate that specifically if you're from Europe, you're gonna have up to 5% Neanderthal DNA like in your sequencing from generations yester yonder year, um, your great 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 granddaddy was probably a Neanderthal. And the interesting thing about that is that the DNA that they have given you, it shows up and it does some awesome things in human, modern humans today. For example, immune response. Some of your immune responses, you could have the way your body reacts to illnesses and viruses and how quickly or not quickly can depend on how much Neanderthal DNA you have. Pain receptors. Apparently you are slightly more sensitive to pain the more Neanderthal DNA you have, which can seem like a bad thing. You're like, I don't want to feel pain. But back in the day, back in the Neanderthal day, having a high pain receptor was a really good survival tool. Because if you stepped on something in the wild or if something bit you or if you were injured or in danger in any way shape or form it's normally to do with pain so you needed to know quicker the quicker that you could realize that you would stepped on a poisonous thorn the quicker you could sort yourself out so um these kind of like archaic survival instincts are turning up today and unfortunately when you stub your toe it's gonna hurt you a little bit more i'm going to link below where I was researching because there were a lot of studies and they're like these science people are just so freaking clever and I need to talk to a genome expert because I'm still trying to get my head around it but from what I can take from it there is a, a rising theory that the Neanderthals had a more of a neurodivergent pathway which leans more to the sort of autism and the Asperger's side of neurological thinking which kind of makes sense so if the neanderthals were groups of people that stayed in very small groups whereas homo sapiens tend to tended to have like larger clubs larger families larger like villages of people neanderthals were more highly intelligent critical thinkers um they were able to make some amazing tools they were one of the first hominids to bury their dead um, one study was saying they think that Neanderthals showed humans like how to bury their dead. That's cool. That's a cool fact to bring up at a party. So the autism link with 
Neanderthal DNA is super interesting. There was a study where they've taken the DNA and they've made kind of like a petri dish of Neanderthal stem brain stem cells. I don't even know. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna link it below so you can do your research on it because I might not relay this in the most scientifically correct way. But what I gathered from it was that they in this dish they are making the literal cells. Um, of Neanderthals and they're seeing how they react to this and that and um, what this study said was that they were more closely aligned with um, the studies in, of children with autism. Um, it was just very close. So it may mean that um, autism, you might be more predisposed to autism if you have more Neanderthal genes and it might, and this is all speculation, but it might be a really good theory of why the Neanderthals died out as a species. Like maybe it wasn't just a big fight. So the theory is emerging that Neanderthals with their neurodivergent autistic brains, it made them quite elite in terms of critical thinking and um, other skills. However, where Homo sapiens might have had sort of a one-upmanship on Neanderthals was they were way more social creatures and they could read way more social cues. And essentially, you could gossip. And if you can gossip and lie and kind of create that whole fabrication, then you can create an environment where you're like, hey guys, we're all gonna get together and we're gonna go and kill that band of Neanderthals at 7 p.m., meet here sharp bring your tools. That could be a very important factor into why the Neanderthals didn't survive down the line and Homo sapiens did because we were just slightly more skilled at like ganging up on everyone. I mean, it makes sense. They have um, been able to find on fossilized Neanderthal skulls, they've been able to analyze like the tartar that's built up around the tooth that's been fossilized as well. So they can tell what these guys were eating. And they were eating like fruits and nuts and they were also eating like big animals. They were also eating steamed cooked oats. So their food was prepared. It was heated and cooked, not um, burnt oats, but like steamed boiled oats. Interesting. They were also found to have been trading and moving around and trading uh, shells and things from certain areas. Um, Neanderthal graves and um, burial sites have found them in possession of uh, things that would have been from a different trade route. So they were trading. They've found out recently that they could make string. They found like microscopic uh, bits of twisted fiber um, on Neanderthal possessions and basically worked out that they could make string, which is like another huge leap for um, early, early human people to do. Interestingly, they've also found Neanderthals in the island of Crete, which is 40,000, 40, which is 40 kilometers away from any mainland, which means, I mean, that's, that's a lot to swim. So it means that how did they get there? And at no point in time that we know of was Crete ever connected to a landmass um, in the time period that the Neanderthals were around. So that means the Neanderthals must have been able to sail and they worked out how to get a boat or a raft and they went over to Crete for a holiday. It, it's so hard to get your head around because you think it's a Neanderthal, it's, it's not a human being, but it is also, it is also a human being because you were able to mate, well, they were able to mate and have fertile offspring. And you can't mate successfully with something that is not human. So they were in fact human, it's just so weird to wrap your head around because we don't have humans slash not humans that are around today. Um, we can tell like height wise, they were averagely around five foot six, um, whereas the Homo sapiens were taller. So Neanderthals were smaller, but they were just built bigger. They were just built more like stocky and um, they have the same bone in the in a throat in humans, which is basically what holds your voice box in. So it meant that they talked, um, but because it's like a little bit bigger, they would have sounded deeper. So maybe now we know why all those homo sapiens were running off to shag the Neanderthals, because the broad shoulders and the deep voice. I mean. So all in all, the ancient human subspecies, more of them are being discovered. It's like a, it's like an evolving, changing timeline of human history. And I think in the next 10, 20, 30 years, we're gonna have probably even a different perspective to we do now. History is being rewritten faster in this time period than I think in any others, because so many more discoveries are happening. So it's just super exciting. And I think that the Neanderthals and the Den Denisovans and any ancient sub 
species, um, they were more uh, complex, cognitively complex than we can imagine. And there's still so much mystery about just how much they did. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you would like to help support the channel, I really appreciate uh, you leaving a comment. Just drop by, leave a little comment. I do try to reply to as many as possible. Um, likes and shares are also greatly appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. Happy hunting. <gasps> so much information.